All right, so this morning, of course, I preached on, you know, a Bible reading, the importance of Bible reading. I mentioned that we're doing that challenge for the month of January. And the challenge is to be able to complete the entire New Testament within the 31 days of January. And I think that's a great goal. And what I want to do now is kind of continue. Obviously, we're wrapping up this year. We're going to be starting a brand new year in just a couple days. And I just want to take the time tonight to, one, just kind of give a real quick recap. I know pretty much everybody here has been here practically since the beginning, if not the very first service. So we've had a lot of people that are here now that have just continued with. And now it's only been six months, but it's been a long six months as far as just there's a lot of things that have been going on. A lot of exciting things that have been going on. And now I feel like, you know, our church is really getting solid. I mean, we're, we're to the point now where things are going to start picking up momentum and picking up steam and, and really starting to do a lot more for the Lord. But let's take a look back real quick. We went over this briefly in the announcements, but, you know, the work that's being done here for God, the work that God is doing with you, with everybody here in this church is great. I mean, we've had, we're, we're up to 335 salvations for, for the six months that this church has been around. That's awesome. But I'm looking for 2019 to be way better. Obviously, it's only been half a year, but we're going to be setting goals. I actually meant to have this in print, but the big goal that I want to focus on for next year is to try to get 800 salvations for the year. Now, if we're, I'm using that just based off of 350 is the goal for this year. So more than double that for an entire year. Because I don't, not only do I want to do what we did this year, but I want to do more. I want to see us do even more, push it a little bit more. And one of the ways that we're going to be able to do that is to, to reach more people, get more people out soul winning. There's, there's multiple ways to do this, but ultimately it's either going to come from, it's going to have to come from more time one way or another. Now we all only have so much time in our lives individually, right? There's only so much time that you have personally. But when we, the, another way we could add time though is by adding more soul winners because then there's more people on the ground putting in those hours to reach more people. Uh, in any given area, you can come up with a pretty good estimate of how many people are going to get saved. I mean, we could see how, how, based on how many doors you have to knock versus, you know, does it take before people get saved? Different neighborhoods are different than others. But overall, you're going to reach this kind of general, this is the receptiveness of the area overall. This is what it's going to take. So in order to really start reaching and getting uh, bigger numbers, we have to increase and do more teaching and training and getting more people involved in getting out sowing. Now, um, thankfully, we have, I mean, we have almost 100% participation as far as soul winning goes in our church. I mean, there's almost literally like almost every single person that comes here is going out soul winning and everyone's going at different times, which is totally acceptable too. That's fine. That's great that we have opportunities on Sunday. We have Monday, we have Saturday, and then we have any other day that people decide that they can go out and do some soul winning. We need to make sure that we're keeping... Uh, the excitement level up, though, I think, you know, we, it was really exciting at the beginning. I know a lot of people were happy to have a church that, that fit their beliefs. And, and that was going to be a place where we can go out and, and kind of everybody gather together and not have to put up with a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the teachings that are common in IFB churches, kind of in the areas and, and, you know, it's, it's refreshing to be around other like-minded believers. You don't have to feel like you can't say what you believe in church. I, I hope people don't feel that way here. I, I haven't experienced that. I think everyone's been pretty forthcoming, and, and it makes it that we're all together in unity because we really ought to be in unity within the, within the church anyways. There's always going to be some, some disagreements in some areas where you're not going to see eye to eye on absolutely everything. But, I mean, we really want to be in, in unity. And just the fact that we have so many people going out soul winning shows, it demonstrates that we are in unity. One of the things that I want to, I want to bring up, and again, we're going to get to some Bible, uh, you know, soon. This isn't just going to be all my thoughts and things like that. But it's important just as a church for us to be able to grow together together. Um, you know, it, you probably get the, it, 
You probably all already know this and understand this, but the church isn't about just like the pastor. It's about everybody here. And no one person, it never should be ever about any one person or any personality or anything like that. We're in this together. And, and I really want our church to grow. I want everybody to make efforts to, to get to know one another, come to the event as much as possible. I know people are driving long distances, but it, it's going to just help solidify our church to whenever you can possibly do it, to make it out, to, to do the things that we have scheduled. And I know everybody so far has been, has, has been really involved and it's very much appreciated. But one of the other, in order to reach our church goal, because a church goal I'm mainly focusing on is the salvation number. That's something we keep track of. It's something that, that we can work, you know, see where we're at throughout the year and, and make extra events and push harder at. But in order to do that, we're also gonna need to reach our own personal goals. And I, I, am, I think having goals for, I'm just gonna say this, I think having goals are great. I don't have any problems with New Year's resolutions. You know, a lot of times people look down on stuff like that or they'll mock them. And I understand why people mock New Year's resolutions just because so many people fail when they make these resolutions, right? I prefer, I don't necessarily call them a resolution, but I don't have a problem with the word either. You resolve to do something, that's fine. But I just like goals, like setting goals, Let's take a step back. Let's see what we've done already this year. See where you're at and then try to increase personally. Try to make sure you're on the upward path that you're moving and trying to achieve more just in your own personal life. I know there's people in this room that have never been uh, soul winning before and have never done any talking before that this year have now gotten to the point to where they can be a talker at the door. That's great. Praise the Lord for that growth. That's awesome. But now let's try to thinking ahead, say if that's me, you know, I've gone from maybe not sowing as much to doing more. Let's think about the year coming up. What else can I do to even increase and do a better job? Maybe, maybe you just start learning, but you don't have all the Bible verses memorized for preaching the gospel to someone. You, you really rely on um, or, or you put notes in your, in your Bible of what well, this tells me now to go here and to go there. Why don't you focus more on trying to get that just known in your mind so that you don't have to rely on notes to give the gospel to someone. And hey, if that's where you're at, great, praise God. But what we want to do is focus on growing and learning and doing even more. So what, wherever it is that you're at in your own walk with God and your own spirituality, let's look at how we can increase that. Keep track of, start keeping track of, if you don't already, your own personal salvations, people that you lead to Christ. Keep track of that. I mean, we keep track of it as a church. It's good, it's motivating, but it's also something that you could look at and be like, well, why is it that it seems like I'm not getting very many people saved lately? I was getting people saved a lot more regularly. What am I doing different? It's a good way to just kind of check yourself, just, just see Am I getting involved in sin? Am I, am I not putting in very much time? Am I kind of letting the things of God just go on the back burner? Like what's going on to and evaluate where you're at? It's a, it's a good thing to do. And um, so with your own personal, you know, like leading people to Christ, or how about this? Maybe uh, I, one of the things I know Verity, Church, Verity Baptist Church does, which I really love a lot, and I, do, I haven't gotten to the point to uh, creating our, our cards yet, but they have these follow-up cards. But one of the things I like about their, their follow-up is that um, when you get someone saved, pray for that person. Like you lead someone to Christ, get their name, write it down, and, and pray for that person. Pray for them for a whole week. You know, don't just leave it at that door and, and you know, give them time, pray about it, and then, and then see if you could, you could get a hold of them. If they'll give you their contact information, if they're interested in church or whatever, try to, get, try to bring them in church. That's something that, is, that can never just be left up to one person to do. I mean, look at, we had over 300 salvations already. If it was my responsibility to just have to call on all of these people, I mean, I, don't, I just literally don't even have the time to follow up with these people. On top of that, they didn't talk to me. They're not going to be any familiarity. I'm just going to be some strange, random stranger calling them on the phone. But you spent the time with that person. You know, and spiritually speaking, if you led them to Christ, you're their spiritual father. You know, like that's, you're the one that gave birth to them. And the Bible is very clear about that as well, that that's how the Apostle Paul dealt with people. 
He said, you have many teachers, but you, don't, you only have one father. And he was referring to bearing spiritual children. So work on your own um, goals for salvation. How about church attendance too? You know, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing right now, try to, try to plan on being able to make it in church more frequently in 2019. Your Bible reading, we're, we're going to be doing a big push in January, but don't just let it end in January. Try to make that push for the whole year. We're going to be doing a lot of different challenges and, and the memory verses and things like that. Just participation in various events or various uh, you know, challenges that the church does. Try to, try to focus and say, you know what, I'm going to do all these. Uh, everything, maybe, maybe all the challenges that the church puts forward, I'm going to participate in every single one of those. Plan on that. Say, I'm going I'm to do this. I'm going to make sure that I don't let any of these fall by the wayside. And just to give you an idea of what some of those things are going to be, obviously January we're going to be doing the, um, the, the Bible reading one. Say, so, yeah, I could do that. I'm going to read the whole New Testament in the month of January. We're going to have, and I haven't figured out which month we're going to do all these in, but there's one that we're going to do where I'm going to try to preach the God, and this is probably the hardest one, I'm going to preach the gospel to at least one person every single day. And it's not even preaching the gospel, you have to attempt to. So the, the challenge is where you just have to make sure that you make it a point every single day of the entire month, you're going to try to give somebody the gospel. Now, if they just refuse it and you don't get a chance to, okay, but you're going to attempt it with someone every single day. We do a prayer challenge. We're going to spend a certain amount of time in prayer every single day, and you're going to be required to pray for everybody on our list every single day. And that's going to be another one. So these are, these are different things that are going to be coming up that are going to be emphasizing different aspects of the spiritual life, your walk with God, to make sure that you're not letting any of these things kind of fall by the wayside. Because look, it's, it's very simple, but it can become hard. It can become, you know, you get real busy and you start letting things slip. And we want to make sure we're not letting things slip. And on top of that, we want to make good habits for ourselves. So if you get in the habit, like this month, getting in the habit of, hey, reading more than just once a day, if you could get yourself into that habit, great. If you've been doing the Bible memory, you have to make time for your Bible memory time you start forming a habit of doing your Bible memory at a certain time in your schedule every day. Great. I know like one of the times that I do it that works for me is on my drive to work. That's a time that's worked out really well for me to do Bible memory. It's a time where I've got just enough time to make sure I can focus on these verses and it's not very distracting. There's nothing else going on. But that's like just in my life, that's what works for me. And you need to be able to find times where you do that. Maybe it's when you're getting ready. Maybe whenever you take a shower, you can, you could, you know, get the verse and just start going over and over again while you're taking a shower, whatever it is. Like, like you have these times in your life where you can multitask and get other things done. Try to insert these different things uh, at those times. And, and I want you to really seriously think about 2019 and say, what am I going to do? This is what I've done up to this point in my life, or this is what was done in 2018, what can I do to make 2019 even better? At the end of the day, if we're not moving forward, I believe we're going to end up being moving backward. People don't stay stagnant for very long at all. It's so short, it's like you're not stagnant. You're either moving forward or you're going to start backsliding and moving back. There, there's really not much of a middle ground involved. Um, Jesus Christ, and this is, this is um, I'm not going to get into all the context, but it's still a very true statement in general. It kind of stands on its own. In Matthew 12, 30, it says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. And obviously this could be applied to soul winning. Say, well, if you're not gathering with Jesus, he says, actually what you're doing is scattering. You say, well, I'm not really doing anything. He said, no, if you're not gathering with me, if you're not actually doing the work, you're actually doing harm. You're scattering abroad. You're not, you're not, um, you know, doing nothing actually is detrimental. And we need to remember just that concept in general that we want to be moving forward. We want to be pushing, pushing harder to, to do as much as we can, do, do even a little bit more um, so we don't end up getting, um, getting idle. 
We're in Galatians 5. Look at verse number 16. Because this is also going to help in the new year. Obviously, we know the Bible teaches that we cannot serve God and mammon. That's another, um, as, as we think about all the things that we need to do in our lives, our personal goals, and we want to increase Bible reading, increase church attendance, increase Bible memory, you know, do all these different things, soul winning. Uh, it, it's all going to be vying for your time. You've got families, you've got, you know, other obligations, you've got work, you have to make everything fit together. And it's important to keep the focus on the right thing because you cannot serve God and simultaneously be serving mammon or money. But let's look at Galatians chapter 5 because this is also going to have a good teaching here. Verse number 16, the Bible says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So what is it that's going to keep us from doing the things that we want to do in 2019? It's walking in the flesh. When you're walking in the flesh, it's, it, that prevents you from doing what it is that you really want to do. It, it says what you would, that's what you desire, it's what you want. So in, in 2018, you're thinking, well, I've got these resolutions, this is what I want to do with my life, these are the areas I want to improve, this is what I want to do. Well, when you're walking in the flesh, that's going to prevent you from doing all those things. And the Bible says, hey, if you walk in the Spirit, then you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's great. That's awesome. But we need to make sure then that we're doing what we can to walk in the Spirit and that the flesh doesn't, doesn't take over. The Bible says here in verse 18, it's going to continue. It says, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told, also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of these are very grievous sins, but it's important to just, you know, reread these, reading your Bible on a regular basis, Examine yourself. Are you getting sucked into anything like, you know, idolatry or, or strifes or wrath or, be, you know, just becoming real hateful or whatever? You know, there's, there's things that, um, you know, obviously heresies or envyings and wanting what other people have. There's all of these things. N nobody is above these things. Nobody. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you've been coming to church. This is the flesh. And we still have the flesh. And this is what the flesh is going to try to drive you to do. Any of these things on this list, it's going to, your flesh is going to try to drive you in one of these directions. We need to be aware of it. And we need to make sure that that's not going to keep us back from doing what we want to do. So we can walk in the Spirit. Turn to um, Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read for you from Ezra chapter 9 on preparing our heart. Ezra, Ezra is an example of someone who prepared his heart to do right, to do good, and then um, was very blessed and had success. We want to make sure our hearts are prepared. Uh, Ezra 7, 9 says, For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. And as a result of this, when you continue reading the chapter, God blesses him and he gets all this work done. And, and everything that he wanted to do, God was behind him and made sure that it was being done. But why? Because he prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. Our hearts need to be prepared and ready to seek God and to seek his judgment, to seek his law, to seek his way to, and, and to, to go after him. We're going to start that in 2019 by seeking to his words. Seeking to getting all of the New Testament read. That's going to start off our year and hopefully propel us into 2019 to do great things. Now, looking to the new year, don't worry about coming up with some unique thing or some elaborately clever goal. Let's just keep it simple. Right? We don't need to overcomplicate things. 
over and over again, we're going to find, you'll find when you read this, when you read the Bible or read the scripture, everything is very simple. It's so simple. God's commands, it's, it, it's not complicated at all. We're the ones that make it complicated. And the only reason it feels complicated is because it's our flesh trying to draw us into some type, type of sin. But really, it's not complicated. Look at Philippians 3, verse number 1. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. There is a lot of repetition in Scripture. There's going to be a lot of repetition when you come to church. There's going to be a lot of repetition when you read. That's why you see the gospel according to Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. You're going to get the gospel four times. Just in reading the New Testament, in God's Word, you got four testimonies of basically the same things, the same stories. You're going to hear it over and over and over again because we need that repetition. We, want, we, we need to have it in great. Don't let yourself get bored with the things of God or get bored in the Bible. Understand that we need this. And just as the Apostle Paul he says, hey, it's not grievous for me. I don't think it's that big of a deal to write the same things unto you. It's fine. And he says, for you, it's safe. It's very safe for you to hear the same thing again because we need to hear. We need to be reminded of it. Because as you continue to go, your, your, your mind can fade on what's really important. Repetition of God's word is good. And as I mentioned this morning, it's not like you just need to read your Bible one time and that's it. And it's like, well, I know that. I know everything that that book says. We're done with it. Or go to church. Uh, like I've been going to church for a year. I've already done the church thing. I don't need that anymore. Right? That's not the way it works. That's not the way that God has designed us. And that's not the way that that he's instructed us on what we need. We need him daily. We need to be relying on God daily. We need faith daily. We need to be hearing from God daily. We ought to be praying to God daily and asking him for things and communicating with God daily. We ought to be, um, you know, all of these things, this repetition, it needs to be not uh, done any less, but more. Our gathering together and, and fellowshipping together and, and edifying one another needs to be done so much the more as you see the day approaching. Jump down to verse number 8 in Philippians 3. The Bible says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul's setting a mark. You know what that mark is? A goal. He's saying, I am, I've got my eyes focused on the goal, on the prize, on the end. I've set this goal and I'm going to try to reach that goal. And he says, you know what? It doesn't matter what's happened in the past. I'm going to forget those things which are behind. It doesn't matter if you've had a bad past, if you've had a lot of sinful things happen in your life. You know what? I'm going to forget about that. I'm not going to dwell on those things because I'm going to focus on moving forward. And you know what else you should forget about too? Hey, maybe I've done a lot of great things in the past. Let's not ride on what you've done in the past. The way that so many people, you know, I've been guilty of this myself too, of like, oh yeah, I used to be this strong or this fast or this good or whatever, like back, back in, you know, when I was 20 years ago or whatever, well, I used to be able to do that. Well, you know what? Forget those things. It doesn't matter. You know what matters? What you could do right now. Now, obviously, there's going to be like silly examples of, you know, sports or something like that, but spiritually, okay, maybe you've had some really strong years of your life. Don't just keep reliving that. Let's, let's, let's relive it and you're doing it still to this day and doing even more. Don't ride on what you've done in the past. Let's, let's try to push and do 
even more. And that's why he says, you know, and, and for some people this might be a difficult verse. I don't think it's that difficult. He's saying, let's re keep reread re here in verse number 10. It says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. So he's talking about this, the, the resurrection. Now at the resurrection, I believe that's when we're going to get our crowns. And he's saying that, um, he said he has an account. He, he said, not as though I'd already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And what this has to do is this speaks to the mindset of the Apostle Paul. When you're saved, there's no doubt about you being part of the resurrection. The first resurrection, the resurrection of the just, you will be there. There is no, he's not saying he doubts that, but it's what his mindset is. He's, he's saying that if I could apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of, he's already saved. He's already been apprehended by God and he's going to be in that resurrection. But he's, he's trying to, like, if you could work for it, he's trying to work for it to attain it, to achieve it. That's his mindset. That's the way that he's thinking about it, saying that, you know, I don't count myself to have apprehended, verse number 13 is what he says. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He's already been apprehended of God, but I'm not counting myself to have done that. Why? Because he wants to push himself and just work as hard as he can, as if he's going to, you know, just receive this, this great, um, you know, this great reward. I already know that Christ has me, but I'm counting not myself to have apprehended so that he could push himself to do even more. Not that he's trying to earn it, but it's just, it's just this driving force to, to, you know, hey, if I had to, this is what I'm going to do. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Also, um, I believe what he's saying here is with the, the prize, because the prize is different than just being saved. There's, a, there's rewards that you earn by doing good. So on the one hand, yeah, I know I'm already going to be there at the resurrection, but what prizes are you going to attain? What, what crowns are you going to receive at the resurrection? Because not everyone's going to receive the crowns. It's to those that have kept the faith, they've been solid, they've, they've worked hard, you know, and, and put forth all the work that God wanted them to do. They're going to be, you know, like the Apostle Paul says that basically at the end of his life that he's, you know, from henceforth, I know that there's crown laid up for me. He says, I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. At this point, he's like, well, I don't count myself to have gotten that, that crown yet because he's still working and, and, and struggling and, and doing what he needs to do. But at the end of the day, um, and, and that's where we want to be is, is thinking that, hey, we've got a long life to live. There's a lot, there's a lot in front of us. Let's strive to get those crowns, whatever it is. We already have salvation. We have eternal life. There's no doubt about that. But let's work hard to get those crowns, to get those rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we're in Philippians chapter 3. Look down at verse number 15. The Bible says, Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so you have us for an example. Turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Philippians chapter 3 showed us the Apostle Paul had a mark. He had a goal. He had a vision of, of where he wanted to be. He's trying to, to a, a, attain that prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We want to uh, win that prize also. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 24. The Bible says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. 
so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And again, we're seeing another reference here to keeping his body in subjection, not fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. So I want to win the prize. I need to make sure I'm in control, that I'm temperate in all things, that, that I'm able to to resist any of these temptations in my life when I'm getting weary. The Bible says, be not weary in well-doing and don't, you know, don't faint in your minds. As we push ourselves to do more and more, you might feel like you're starting to get burned out. Don't let yourself get burned out. Remind yourself of the, of the prize and, and come to church. And you know, we ought to be edifying, encouraging one another also and, and supporting each other so that people don't get burnt out. We could, we could, you know, in all the work that we do, it ought to be fun. I hope, I hope that everyone here enjoys coming to church, enjoys going soul winning, enjoys hearing the preaching, enjoys singing, and, and doing everything here together because it's not meant to be a chore or a burden. You know, I talk about being a lot of work because it is a lot of work. I mean, it, does, it is taxing. It does, it does make your flesh weary when you go out and spend hours on end and you're preaching the gospel and stuff. It is work. But it ought to be something that you enjoy doing. And, and, and if it doesn't, then you need to look at your heart and prepare your heart a little bit and get in the Bible more and just kind of read and, and pray to God and say, God, work on my heart. I want to be, be more zealous for doing the things of God. I want to be more supportive in doing the work that you have for us to do. God, I want to spend more time reaching people because it is a good thing. And usually it's, it's the, the times where it's going to be the hardest is when you're not out doing the work and you're thinking about going and doing it because that's when your flesh is going to say, no, no, you've got more stuff to do. You've got things to do at home. You've got all, this, all these other things to do. But when you actually just are out there doing it, I'm never thinking about anything. Like when I'm out soul winning, you're knocking on doors. You're thinking just about that next door, about that person you're going to be talking to and what a great, what a great time. Thank God for giving us the blessing of being able to go out and reach other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that is awesome. That's when, when you're walking in the spirit, knocking on doors, talking to people about Jesus Christ, open up your Bible, trying to show people, trying to per persuade people to believe on Jesus Christ, you know, you don't, you don't need this type of preaching then. It's, it's getting out to do that type of stuff. Fitting it into your schedule, making it work, making the priority in your life, changing your life to revolve around God, to revolve around Scripture, to revolve around the things that God has told us to do. That's what we need to be mindful of and make sure that, hey, we're running a race here. One receives a prize. Let's run like we could win that prize. Let's try to, try to win that race. Turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. And every single one of your individual goals that you decide to do for yourself is going to help everybody. It's going to help the lost. It's going to help our church. Everybody's going to benefit. We're all in this together. Every member that's functioning better <laughs> is, is just going to help the whole. And maybe you're sitting there thinking today, say, I want to do more. But I'm not sure what else I can do. I have a lot of stuff still that we need to do as a church that, that is going to go beyond things that I can do. And I'll tell you what some of those things are right now. If you want to just... If there's something that I say that's something, hey, I can do that or I want to do that. I've got a lot of things that I want to. And you know what? I want you thinking about things too. Okay, this isn't all just, just only ideas that I think of are what we're going to do as a church. I'm going to let you in on just some of the things that I've been wanting to do, some stuff that I want to do in general as a church. And I want you guys all thinking too, because what is the goal? The goal, we all wanted the same thing. 
We all want to reach people. We all want to help people to grow spiritually. We all want people to have, you know, to continue to, to grow, to do more to serve God. We want to do a great work in the service of the Lord. That's what, we all, that's what everyone here should want to do. Grow personally and help other people. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's lots of different ways to do that. We're never going to lose sight of the main thing of literally just bringing the gospel to people, but there's still a lot of other things that can help, be helpful tools along the way. You know, I mentioned baptisms earlier about in, in the announcement time. Well, one of the things that I want to do is create pamphlets that we could have as resources here at church that you could bring with you out soul winning, maybe like a trifold type of a thing or just something that just explains everything about baptism. Why is it important? What does it mean? Why should you get baptized? You know, things that you can leave with someone at the door after they get saved for them to think about even further. Because again, we only have so much time and it's going to be up to them. If they decide not to come to church, well, maybe they'll pick up and read this thing and then something in there will kind of push them to come to church. I want to have that for all major fundamental doctrines. You know, let's have one on salvation. Let's have that goes in a little bit different details than you would maybe at the door. You know, um, so having a, a church attendance, the King James Bible, right? Why, do, why is that important? Why do we use the King James Bible? These types of resources, I want to do a lot more videos and do video clips and try to reach people online. There's, um, there's so many things. Now my mind, of course, my mind is starting to go blank right now as I'm standing up here in front of everybody because I didn't write down the whole list to, to, to go. But there are... There are so many different things that we can do, and I'm sure that people have different talents for. A newsletter, keeping people up to date. That's one thing I used to do is get addresses of all of our visitors and people that visited us and anyone that wants to just receive and say, hey, here's what's going on in our church this month. Here's all the events that have happened. Here's, here's where we're at with our soul winning. You know, keeping people up to date that have come and visited, just keeping interest within the church. These are good things to do. You know, Keeping in touch with people, even if it's just on, on a sending a letter type of a basis, can go a long way, especially when people are kind of, they come to church a little bit, they go, they're, like, they're kind of in, they're kind of out, they're kind of on the fence about it. Keeping those communication streams open is only going to be helpful to, to maybe help steer them to say, no, you know, I need to get back into church. Oh man, it's been a long time and church has just completely left their mind. And then they receive something like this in the mail. Well, doing stuff like that, again, it, it requires someone's time and effort and energy to put that stuff together. But it has value. It's good. I think these are good resources, things that we could spend our time doing in addition to all of the main things and the main focus. These are all you know, per, you know, tertiary things, peripheral things that will be beneficial to other people. I want to get involved in, in community events and fairs and just any time where there's going to be a large gathering of people, we can get out there as a church and we could be represented and we can have, you know, invitations and we could try doing soul winning at th places like that or whatever. I mean, anything that comes up and there's tons of things going on all the time. Let's try to get involved in that stuff. And I want everyone here thinking about, well, what can I do? What skills do I have? How can I help to promote the church or to get people saved or to, you know, spread information, spread the good news? I mean, what, what can we do? We need to work together for that. And, and not have the mindset of, oh, well, every, that's all Pastor Burson's job. Everything, no, I mean... I'm going to help direct and lead and guide, but we're all working here. We're all here to work. We're all here to do the Lord's business. And let, let's at least walk away with that mindset tonight and say, what can I do in 2019? How am I going to help other people this year? How am I going to help the church? What more can I do to serve God? Have you turned to 1 Thessalonians 4? Yes? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. This concept of just doing more is found throughout Scripture as well. He's saying, look, 
we're begging you. That's what beseeching means, right? He's, he's really saying, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you. We're trying to encourage you by the Lord Jesus that as you've received from us how you ought to walk. We told you, this is what you need to do. This is how you ought to live. This is, you know, how you ought to walk in the Spirit and to please God so you would abound more and more, continue to increase, abound more and more in the ways of God. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. He's saying the goal is sanctification. And he's not referring to the sanctification that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's that saving sanctification that makes us all saints. He's talking about the sanctification where you're putting away the filth of the flesh and not walking in the flesh, like because he's specifically mentioning fornication. Hey, keep your vessel in, in sanctification and in honor. And we need to abound more and more to, 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 to strive to achieve that goal. We know we're never going to be sinlessly perfect while we're in this body, but hey, that's the goal. That's what God wants. That's what God wants us to strive for and to do. Let's work towards that. Um, <coughs> look at verse number nine. The Bible says, But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. So again, we see that um, he's, he's stressing to them that, you know, with their brotherly love. He's like, I want you to increase more and more. He says, I know that you have a good brotherly love. You care about your brethren in Christ, but I want you to just increase more and more. That's a good thing. Let's keep doing and increasing in a good thing, in a good work. Let's do more. So closing here, 2019, our church goals, let's try to get 800 salvations. We need to work together to reach that goal. I think that's a very reasonable goal. It might even be a conservative goal. And if we have to update it later on, to increase it, then let's do it. I'm all for that. Hey, let's go for a thousand, right? But I also don't want to make it just so out of reach that it's just like, oh, pff, we'll never have that. You know, the point of a goal is, is to try to have it attainable, you know, in, 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 you know, where we could say, okay, yeah, it's going to require a little bit more because I, I know people here have been working hard. So trying to squeeze the time and get that extra time to do stuff, it's not that easy, but let's, let's make the extra effort. Let's push for it. And um, I, I, I know that there's gonna, God's going to do a lot, of, a lot of great things here. I can see from my perspective how everybody is coming together and how there really is a solid core group of people within this church. That, that really care and love, about, and love God and want to do what, what God has for us to do. Let's, let's focus on 2019. Think about what you can do to help, to help the church to do more. Uh, if you'd like to, talk to me after service because I have, if you say, well, I don't know how I'd write the, you know, the baptism pamphlet or whatever. I have, I have sermon notes. I keep all my sermon notes. I've got sermons on baptism and all the scripture references, everything that we can put in there. I just need help getting, you know, let's, you know, if you're good with any graphic design stuff or you're good at using the internet tools and going on any of these websites that, that do the printed marketing material, it's easy. It's pretty easy to do. I've, I've done a bunch of that stuff, but I, I need help with that. And there's so many things that I, that, that, you know, aren't going to get done if we're relying on one person to do them. Let's, let's, work, let's, let's work our tails off this year and, and show God that we are His servants. We're here. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Keep our vessel sanctified and meet for the Master's use so that He says, wow, look at all these people here. They're listening to me. They're hearing my words. They're taking them seriously. They're getting sin out of their life. They're offering themselves up a living sacrifice. And then we'll see Atlanta turned upside down. 
What's to stop God from doing that? Just us. That's it. We're the only thing that's going to be standing in the way. Well, let's, let's get our, our flesh out of the way so that God can use us in the spirit and, and do everything that God we know God wants to do here. Let's bow our eyes and have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for loving us, for your great gift of salvation, of eternal life. Lord, we, um, we're all here together because we love you. We want to serve you, Lord. We need your guidance. We need your help. Uh, we need strength to be able to overcome our flesh. Help us to walk in our spirit, dear Lord, and, and to put away the lust of our flesh. We want to be used by you. We're asking for your direction. We're asking for that guidance, Lord, and um, help us to, to have that, that fire burning within us to, that, that'll drive us to do more and, and help us all here to encourage one another and to, to, to keep up with one another, to pray for one another, that... Um, that we can all work together as one body here in this area, Lord. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray.